Alrighty, people. Hello, how are you doing today? And thank you for uh, giving up some of your Saturday time to spend a few moments with me and my crew. Uh, my name is Dr. Will. Uh, some of you may know me on Twitter as uh, People Gaji. So uh, today I will be talking about flipping professional development, which all started for me sort of uh, as a necessity. Uh, I am a, a district instructional technologist, and basically what I do is travel around from school to school uh, teaching teachers how to use a multitude of technologies. And since there uh, were two of us, we had to serve uh, eight schools. It was just the necessary for me to start flipping professional development to make sure that not only would teachers be served, uh, but that it would uh, be a place where I could feel, you know, comfortable uh, in the work that I was doing. Uh, so let's uh, get started. I hope everyone has read the welcome. Uh, so I'm going to cut off this video and. Uh, Start on with it. Okay. So what when we talk about flipping professional development, what are we actually talking about? Uh, we're talking about taking sort of the uh, traditional uh, lecture, or not necessarily a lecture, but the traditional training, and flipping it and publishing it online. What we're talking about is providers of professional development creating videos, podcasts, assigning videos that teachers will view on their own time. And what I have done is create uh, training videos on a series of technologies, whether it, it, I have done it on Google Drive. Uh, Google Plus, Google Hangouts, I've done it on Edmodo, I've done training videos on and webinars on Twitter, and just a whole host of uh, different technologies for teachers to be able to uh, view on their own time. As a district, we also subscribe uh, to two professional uh, development uh, repositories. Uh, called PD360 and Atomic Learning. And those videos can be assigned to teachers uh, to view, uh, again, on their own time to assist them in learning a variety of technology tools. So why should we flip uh, professional development? Uh, first, we're talking about engaging teachers using tools that they already have and already use them. So teachers are already on YouTube. They already have tablets. They already have smartphones. They're on uh, Pinterest, Google Plus, Facebook, etc. And so they're already spending uh, their personal time there anyway. I'm also talking about allowing more time and trainings for discussion, exploration, and application. And so what that means is if teachers know this training is going to happen uh, two weeks from now. And they can go on uh, Edmodo. They can go on YouTube. They can go on uh, Google Plus with the communities and watch uh, certain videos already that I've created in terms of this is how you do a sign in. Uh, this is how you follow people. This is how you. Uh, are able to view these resources, then teachers can come to the training with logins already created, with some sort of familiarity with the tool, and then I can at that point begin going through, okay, well, how do you use this tool in the classroom? How can this tool be set up to either meet Common Core standards or how can you use this tool to better engage your students in a variety of learning activities. We're also talking about 
creating a resource that can be revisited. And so after a teacher, either before training or after training, they can always go back and watch that video and be able to get that, I don't, I don't want to say remediation, but get that re refresher uh, to be able to go back and say, well, how did he do this or how can I do that? So they always have that as a resource to go back and learn that tool again. We also, why? We're also talking about differentiating individual learning needs of teachers. I mean, let's not forget, we talk about why or how do we differentiate for students, but teachers, when they are going to professional development, they are the students too. And for, and I do that all the time. You know, sometimes I, I do things and I look up and I tell teachers, I say, today you are the student and I am the teacher. And when you have uh, teachers who, you know, maybe they're auditory learners or they're visual learners or et cetera, having PD flipped and, on, and having it done on a variety of modules, uh, you are able to meet the individual needs of teachers. And I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed doing what I've done. And later on, I will talk about that in this uh, presentation, talk about what I've done and to sort of uh, mention certain experiences teachers have come back to me. Another reason, okay, we talked about uh, learning styles, and uh, but I mentioned it earlier about it saves time because teachers come to the trainings already uh, prepared, uh, already have a familiarity. So if I only have 45 minutes with student, with the teachers during their uh, planning period, or maybe I have 50 minutes after school, instead of spending 25 minutes getting teachers set up with their accounts and answering questions about uh, do I need to put in my bio here or do I need to put my real age in here or what have you, uh, they're coming to the training already set up they already have questions hopefully prepared and we can just really jump into the to the tool and at that point really start talking about okay how can this be used for learning so it, it's been very uh, it's very helpful uh, in that manner uh, and it also gives teachers options and, and, and how they perceive professional uh, development uh, because, you know, generally speaking, teachers are, you know, just really used to in their classrooms being said uh, at the schools, being said, hey, today is a PD day, what have you, and they get what the district sort of uh, or the principal mandates, this is what we're going to do. And a lot of times, let's be honest, it is not uh, based upon teachers' interests, teachers' strengths teachers' uh, experience, professional level, students, et cetera. And this sort of alters teachers' opinions to say, hey, I can now get PD the way I want it based upon my interests and my needs. I often tell teachers in my workshops that I'm not here to mandate anything. Like what I bring to you is to help you out. And I have the saying, if my gravy doesn't flavor your rice, then don't use it because I'm not here to, you know, force my will upon you. And to have teachers uh, really start to think about PD on a personal level and how it is going to benefit them and take their teaching and their students to the next level is one of the reasons why we should flip PD. So what are the obstacles? Uh, now we're talking about teachers changing their mindset from being prescribed PD to ch teachers choosing what they want to learn. And so when I put those videos up, teachers can go through those videos, or if I can assign videos, teachers can go through and say, I'm comfortable with this, I know this, this will benefit me, this will work with my students, or this won't. And they actually have the option to view it or not to view it, and it's basically their choice. Uh, it also requires teachers to, you know, learn tech, new technologies 
and to be comfortable in learning new technologies. I mean, and that's a big deal for a lot of teachers. I mean, we're at a, a district where every teacher has a MacBook Pro. And let's be honest, most of us was, you know, have been raised in a PC world. And to be handed this, you know, this MacBook and knowing how Macs work very differently from PCs, uh, there are a lot of teachers who are very hesitant about it. I mean, I, I'm, I've done trainings where teachers, they're afraid to touch the trackpad, you know, and I tell them, hey, you're not going to hurt that thing now unless you take it in your backyard and shoot it or you throw it against the wall. That's one thing, but just touching it, let's go for it, you know. And so teachers just really have to go for it and, and just let it, let it go, be loose with it and uh, learning these new technologies. And so that is one of those things that uh, – Teachers just really have to sort of overcome, which is one of the obstacles. Uh, and also, you know, teachers just may not want to. They just may say, hey, I, I don't want to use YouTube. I don't want to use that model. I, I don't want to do such and such for, for PD. I, that just, that's not me. That's not what I want to do. I'm, I have a lot of stuff that's on my plate. The district has all of these things for me to do. And quite honestly, this is just something, another something for me to learn and to do. And I just don't have the time nor the interest. And, uh, you know, I've, that's just something I've had to work with. I, I once did a uh, workshop on Twitter, and I honestly had a teacher because, as I said earlier, we have uh, PD360, which is a site uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but PD360 has videos covering the gamut from technology to uh, lesson planning to teaching techniques, et cetera. And after, I, you know, my, my thing with Twitter, she literally asked me, well, what makes this different from PD360? Why this over that? You know, I have just so many things on um, my plate. And basically I told her that PD360, the people don't talk back. And on Twitter, you're able to get that live feedback and able to really network with teachers on a more personal level. Uh, ultimately, she chose not to be uh, on Twitter further and has really kept up with PD360. But I do champion her for attending the training and for uh, little, for you know taking the time to get to see it. Now, there are several tools out there that you can use to flip professional development. Now, what I have personally chosen to do, uh, I use Edmodo. Uh, I've used Google Communities, and I've used YouTube. And I'm assuming that many of us are familiar with these uh, sites, but uh, for the purpose of this uh, workshop and this being online, I will sort of briefly go through it. Uh, Edmodo is a social network designed and developed for K-12 through education. And on Edmodo, uh, you can, as a teacher, there are different groups, professional development groups you can join uh, to uh, network with teachers, collaborate with teachers, find a bevy of resources that you can be used in addition to what you can do for your students. With Google Communities, there are just, and, and I, I don't know how many groups are out there. It's just phenomenal from Chromebooks to Google Hangouts and Education to uh, Google Apps, uh, Common Core. I mean, there's just so much out there that you as a teacher can uh, really join these communities and learn from. And what I did with the district is I created a private uh, Google community for the district. And in that community, I post uh, blog posts, 
uh, I post uh, videos, infographics, etc., that all deal with a technology tool or a way to teach and engage students in very interesting and varied ways uh, because I want to, again, engage teachers and allow teachers to seek these professional op development opportunities on their own time. And what I truly love about Google Communities, and we are a Google school, is by this being mobile, teachers can literally be at the hair salon and checking out videos from the community. They can also be inside the community and engaging each other. Uh, and on Twitter, we often talk about a personal learning network. Well, I know there are fantastic teachers in the district. And what I also wanted to do was use these communities so that teachers around the district could get in there and share what they're doing to be able to pool and curate that knowledge base and to help one another get to the next level. Uh, and it has uh, been great. Our teachers have joined uh, the community. I've had teachers posting uh, links and resources in the community. So it's been a uh, pretty awesome experience. And then there is uh, YouTube. And we all know that it's a social network dedicated to spreading user-generated content from all over the world. So no, I'm not talking about, in this instance, people posting videos of their cat wearing the latest outfit. Uh, what I am talking about is posting uh, training videos or posting a video of a teacher uh, teaching a model lesson, uh, posting or curating videos that meet common core standards and having teachers have the access to that information 24-7 whenever they want to on their own time. And again, because each of these technologies are mobile, teachers are not limited by time, by space, it was just very flexible and really sort of fits uh, their lives and what they do. And so with Edmodo, and he, this is a screenshot of what I have done. Uh, I don't know if you can see this clearly, but what I actually did was uh, I developed an online self-directed technology course. I call it Snapshot in Digital Learning. And in this, uh, as you can see, that the course was divided into four one-week modules. Uh, they were to study social networking, blogs, social bookmarking, and video editing, and sharing. And this was a way for teachers to Get in there. Uh, as you know, uh, you can post uh, in Edmodo blog, blog postings. You can post uh, videos, et cetera. And so inside this course, uh, I posted those things as resources for teachers. And in this sort of assignment area, what I did was post it in a link from a Google Doc. And then that teachers would click on that link, take them to the Google Doc, and now sort of really delve into discussions about how they were actually using this tool, how they could use this tool. And so this was uh, a great opportunity for teachers, again, to participate in uh, learning on their own terms the way they wanted to and be introduced to new technology tools. Here's a snapshot of the Google uh, community that I spoke of earlier. Uh, the, as you see, the name is called Hattiesburg Teachers, and it is a private uh, community. If you see the first sort of two videos here, uh, you would see uh, 
part one and part two to Google Drive that I did. And I actually had to shoot these videos twice because the first time that I actually did the videos, I did it just one whole take. And you end up being around mm, 27, 28 minutes. And I was, it wasn't long to me, basically, because I can sit there and watch an interesting YouTube video that's 40 minutes. But uh, people were saying it was a little long. And uh, even my you know, new technology director, my boss, I even said, okay, well, let's make them a little shorter. And so what I ended up doing was I reshot the videos. Uh, also, and a different, and I also did it differently because I, I did each of them. I used to shoot them on QuickTime, and those two videos were actually shot using Camtasia, which is a great tool for flipping professional development, by the way. And I shot just two shorter versions. One was about uh, – how what Google Drive is and how you can upload and share videos. And part two was about how the Google Docs actually work and how they can use these Google Docs to do a variety of things. Uh, particularly what was of interest to teachers when I talked about this was how they could actually plan uh, lesson plans together. So as a team, instead of emailing each other back and forth and having this you know, 10, 12 email trail between these two, they could actually, uh, as a team, work on one single document to do their lesson plans. And when and it was phenomenal. And when teachers really got into it and noticed how three or four of them can be in there at the same time and typing and everything, they got really giddy. They were very excited about it. And I had teachers actually get in during the training and edit a calendar together. So it was fantastic, and they really saw the value in it, and they'll start using it. And every time, you know, I, I would go into the school, I'd say, are you using Google Drive? Are you using Google Drive? And uh, they, they it, was, it was fabulous, so it was awesome. By the way, not really part of my presentation, but you must use Google Drive. And I always tell teachers this. Never drink without Google Drive because you must save your documents, okay? And you do not want to do anything that can damage your laptop and have everything wiped out and all of your lesson plans, pictures, et cetera, gone. So use Google Drive to always back up. All right, so let's get back to this. Uh, YouTube, if my slide will come up, as you can see, uh, this is another place where I have flipped professional development. The first video is actually the first uh, Google Drive training that I created. And I actually did that one by doing a live uh, Google Hangout by myself. <clears throat> and I shared the screen. And that video was about, I guess, 22 minutes. And then one teacher was like, whoa, that's a little long there. And so that's why I did the two ones where I split it up. But it's there right here on the theme. Uh, I also have, uh, this, we did a live, I organized some live Google Hangouts with uh, professionals. And this one was with uh, Abdul Muhammad, who is a social worker in Connecticut. And he actually spoke to our students from three different classes in the district. And then right here at the bottom, if you can see that, that was a Q&A with uh, Crystal Rowry, who is a phenomenal, excuse me, a phenomenal graphic designer in LA. And that Q&A was organized. Uh, she had four classes, basically. She had four classes. Uh, from across the district in that Q&A, and students were able to ask her about her work, what type of education she had. She shared her work uh, as well as, uh, you know, how much money she made. So the students had a great time. She had a great time. And what I loved about this, doing this via a Google, a live Google uh, Hangout, was not only 
did the students immediately love it? But being that this video uh, is on YouTube and I put it in the, the private Google uh, community for the district, other teachers can now look at it and see the power of Google Hangouts uh, to get more interested in them. And as well, if they wanted to, they could sh actually show the video to their students. And so it's a win-win. Okay, so finally, let's get into, well, how do we flip uh, professional development? And so what we're talking about is before or after trainings, the provider will post the tutorial on the sites he or she uses. And what I do a lot of times is beforehand, I will make a video about what I'm going to be teaching students. And what I will do is, after the trainings, particularly when teachers are like, I have more questions, or how do I do this, and how do I do that? Well, I tell teachers, hey, don't worry. I've created a screencast video tutorial, so when I say go to this button, you see the cursor move to that button. And so I explain everything explicitly. And what I do is videos are put inside the community, but I also, via Google Drive, will go ahead and shoot that video to share that video to the entire uh, schools. So our email is set up to where I can share that share that video share that video to all of Hattiesburg High School or I can share it to all of the middle school. And so everyone will get that video and of course it's in the community and everyone can look at it, they can view it if they need again, view it for a refresher or go back because they missed something. It's there for them. Uh, you as a provider you know, you email it to teachers, inform them what was posted and how it can be used in the classroom. So, I, you know, things will be covered, but, again, if you have 40 minutes, 45 minutes for teachers, you can't really do what you want to do. I mean, you, you're you in the classroom, teachers. Uh, you know if you're only going to see students for 40 minutes. There's only so much you can do. And so for here, what I like to do is get the information out there, and sometimes I will – uh, shoot an email out, you know, saying this is Dr. Wheel's tips, and sort of say, you know, here, uh, you can use this to do this. Have you thought about this? Oh, with this, you can do that. Uh, just to sort of uh, let them know, put the bug in their ear that, you know, this can happen, this can benefit you, uh, you can do this. I, it's interesting because I was so excited about Google Drive. I told them, teachers, I'm here to I'm, I'm here to change your life, I, you know. And some of them were giggling. And then when I did it, like, oh, you, oh, I said, hey, but don't look under your chair because I'm not Oprah. There's nothing there for you. I had no gifts, but I did change some lives. It was fantastic. Uh, so uh, we are going to uh, go to the last slide, which is a bit of a promotion. It's my bio. So uh, I'm just going to do that, let you, you know, check it out if you want to. If not, you know, it's up to you. And uh, from there, if anyone has any questions, uh, then let the moderator know. And if the moderators, if you could please, uh, I guess via audio, let me know what a question is or questions what they are, and I can answer them. So. Thank you for visiting today with me, and hopefully you had a good time, you learned something, and I appreciate you for showing up. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Will. I'm going to go ahead and hand over the mic privileges over to Renee, unless, Renee, you'd like to just type your question over there in the comment box. Dr. Will, I did have a question for you. 
whether or not your colleague works with you in creating training yeah. videos as well. Well, I had one colleague, and uh, unfortunately, uh, she went on, and no, she did not uh, make those training uh, videos. Um, for me, it was just natural uh, because I'm into social media, and I don't know how many of you know this, but I actually went to film school, and I have a d degree in film production. So for me, really making the videos was just something I was interested in. It was a natural fit. And so that's how I did it and everything. So, uh, you know, my mama's in this room, and it's interesting. She said, she's like, great info, Dr. Will. And I'm, th I'm thinking, like, when your mama calls you doctor, is that really a is that really a, a compliment? You know, so uh, uh, so yeah. Who 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 else is? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. This is Renee. Can you hear me, Doctor Will? I can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and hello from up in the Delta, by the way. Um, Are you in Mississippi too? I am. I'm up at um, uh, Cleveland. Ooh, all righty. And uh, real familiar with Hattiesburg, I was real, I'm happy to hear that they're doing something like this. Mm -hmm. My question is, because I'm in the Delta and I do a lot of professional development up here in the Delta, how how have you found? What kind of response did you get from your district administrators to doing this? Was there any you know pushback for them or any particular support from them? And how would you suggest approaching other school administrators or district level people with this idea? I have not had any pushback from administrators. I haven't had necessarily any verbal support per se. And I have had a few say, well, you know, I did check out the video, uh, but None have come to me to say, oh, this is awesome. Uh, in terms of the district, I can only assume that, well, I can say it this way. I, I think my current, my former boss and my current boss are all for it uh, because, in fact, my current boss bought licenses for Camtasia for the purpose of me creating these videos. So I, I could see that either he saw um, great benefit to it or he said, okay, Will is making these videos anyway, so how can I help him get there? Uh, but he has been supportive in that manner. Uh, I think the superintendent, not putting words in his mouth, but I think he's been supportive of what I have been doing online uh, for, for teachers uh, and students as well. And so it's been great. Now, in terms of pushback, I don't know what kind of pushback you're going to get per se because you're you're creating it and you're putting this online. So you're not interfering with what they're doing. You're not get going into their school. You're not asking for their time. You're not asking for their money, for any resources from them. You're yourself creating these videos and you're posting them online. So if that's something you want to do, I say go for it. I wouldn't even ask for permission. I'll just do it and email it out to teachers. Let them know that the resource the resources are there uh, for them. And then if you get any pushback, really talk to them and explain to them what you're doing and how this can be a benefit uh, to teachers because we're, we are talking about PD that is available to them 24 Seven. So th this is amazing. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed creating it. I know there have been teachers who've been who've enjoyed watching it and having access to it. And for those of us who hear, uh, who are co consider themselves connected educators, then we truly know the benefit of what can be done in an online environment. So I hope I answered your question. Oh, you're welcome, Renee. I think I saw your.
Is it? Don't don't everyone raise their hand at the same time now. Okay, Joan. So I just wanted to say thank you uh, for these great ideas and also what a pleasure it is to see that you found your niche, bringing all your strengths and other education behind all that and you found a way to incorporate that and do something that you really love and, and are just uh, providing a lot of value for the district. And I, I applaud you for that and I'm so happy to see that doctor in front of your name. I've been following you for a long time and uh, it's really cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Joan, the check is in the mail. Oh, I am PeopleGogy on Twitter. That's P-E-O-P-L-E-G-O-G-Y. Renee asked the question. So, yeah, it's uh, PeopleGogy. Is that it? Oh, Renee just asked, will I be presenting at Mecca? I, I put in three proposals. So hopefully one or all will be accepted. I presented at Mecca for the past uh, two years. And for those who are not in Mississippi, Mecca happens to be uh, the Mississippi Educators Computing Association. So it's our tech conference. Uh, Me Mecca is Mississippi's uh, state chapter of ISTE. And uh, my plan is to be there uh, presenting, and hopefully I can bring it. I, I enjoy going there. Is that it? Well, thank you. So if that's it, then uh, Craig and Joan, uh, you can wrap this up. Thank you so much, Dr. Will. I wasn't a follower before this session here, but now I definitely am. Hope to connect a little bit more on Twitter and continue to share and learn together. Thank you again so much. Thank you, everyone.